welcome back uh, to this course on statistical mechanics and what we are uh, trying to do here is to develop an understanding of basic phenomena from the point of view of statistical mechanics and as I repeatedly tell that uh, the, 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 the undergraduates understanding our undergraduate studies of physical chemistry is, is wonderful. Uh, going through all different phenomena which then finds use in biology, uh, biophysical chemistry, in materials, in organic chemistry, all kinds of things that physical chemistry. Physical chemistry is sometimes called the soul of chemistry, but it is certainly the basic understanding of chemistry and also that branch of physics which uh, 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 interface with physics and chemistry. During my course and uh, uh, travel through the world, I found one very interesting thing that what we studied in physical chemistry in universities of United States are uh, the that what we call physical chemistry, theoretical physical chemistry, liquids, polymers and uh, all other aspects of biophysics, protein folding, they are all studied in the physics departments in Europe like in uh, uh, Japan, in uh, not only Europe in Japan, Europe in France and Germany, they are very much in. So, theory of liquid is the physics department and uh, chemistry used to be the traditional chemistry, colloids, organic synthesis, things like that. The reason is that the physical understanding the physical chemistry or the, the things that you are in, uh, in undergraduates requires lot of mathematics and the concepts which are very common and already existed in physics like Liouville equation I told you. Uh, which came to BBGKY or the BBGKY Bogliubov and Bond, they are physicists, Yovon physicists, uh, Karkut was a physical chemist in chemistry department, Green was uh, a more of a physicist, Onsagar was a physical chemist, trained as a chemical engineer. Then other great guys like Zwanzik, they are in chemistry department. So, Stillinger is a chemist and Isidro Hormon is a physicist. So, this branch of uh, statistical mechanics has physics and chemistry working together to unravel, to understand these rather complex systems. Now, we now start one thing for next uh, 40 minutes or so, we will try to do a very, very interesting things, which is a big subject by itself. Just like in theory of liquids, there are books on theory of liquids, here also there are books on uh, endless number of books on polymers. But our emphasis here is to introduce to students the concepts of statistical mechanics to understand polymers and there are some beautiful work has been done, several Nobel prizes have come. The, the picture that we have here is that of Paul Flory and Paul Flory is uh, Consider the father of polymer chemistry or polymer physics, and uh, we have this is chapter in, in my book in statistical mechanics, chemistry, and material science. And uh, we have we have taken this picture from his book, and Paul Flory, along with many other people, uh, many other big names are there in that field. Uh, but he introduced the concepts of statistical mechanics, concepts of probability and he modernized the you know, polymer science. That is why one has so much, he got a single Nobel prize for this I think 1960s or 1970s sometime like that. And so, what we will do many today is many of the things that Flory did uh, and uh, he did pioneering contributions on the distribution of polymer size, end to end distribution of polymer. Uh, introduced the concept of excluded volume, which nobody thought would be so important and so interesting. And then he also went on to do a theory of sol gel transition. And so that his, his, his stamp on the polymer science is really amazingly diverse. And he was both a experiment, an experimentalist and the theoretician. He did many of the experiments himself and he uh, then developed the theory. So, this was probably one of the last of those kind of gentlemen who did both in physical chemistry, both did 
theory and experiment. But of course, he had to be an organic chemist also in order to synthesize these large polymers. Now we continue with Paul Flory's work. So, with millions of connected, so polymers are what we have. One have to uh, uh, remember there are millions. We are not talking of um, uh, ten particle or twenty particle things. We are the, the conventional polymers that we use on everyday nylon and many other things, Teflon or rubber, all these things. I mean, there are millions and millions of monomers connected, and this is the natural playground of statistical mechanics because of this. Uh, the note the term natural playground of statistical mechanics. That's a very very nice way to put into it because. This is completely many body system, these are statistical system and there are some beautiful things that physicists talk about like critical phenomena, where there is a long range correlation emerges that density fluctuation in one region gets correlated with the fluctuation at a distance 1000 angstrom apart, that means 50, 100 molecules apart or 500 molecules apart. In polymer, there is already the correlation because the polymer is a connected thing, but then one monomer knows another monomer which might be 10,000 monomer apart along the contour, along the chain because they cannot cross. So, this excluded volume introduced by Flory introduced a long range correlation into polymer, which that is what later uh, Pierre Dijan and uh, Michael Fisher used the concept of critical phenomena to understand polymer science and polymer physics in a much, much detailed way. So, while Flory what did what we use, use the term polymer chemistry or polymer physical chemistry, what Dijan and Michael Fisher did was considered polymer physics, but you know they also the same thing. So, it was by initiated by statistical applications were initiated by Paul Flory as all written. So, what Paul Flory did uh, and there are some other gentlemen also did uh, the end to end distribution that means, if I have a polymer long chain then it is very important to know what is the distribution of end to end because from that then I can get the size and the size of a polymer is very important. It is not only measured in light scattering that also plays a role in giving rise to the viscosity of the polymer solution and many other properties of the polymer. Okay. And then uh, this effective interaction or excluded follow interaction was introduced by Paul Flory and these remarkable many many theories it is one of the place where theory and experiment agree extremely well. Here is on us is a polymer is called random coil this is random coil because they are connected and even if it is a saturated polymer means they are tetrahedral one C connected to another C, but then because they are tetrahedral. So, they kind of beyond that point it becomes again another tetrahedral, but then this guy can rotate around this guy. So, by the time you have come 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth monomer that it already has a very large number of configurational space. So, because of that this distribution end to end distribution has a huge number of configuration space it can access to that is why you have to talk of a distribution like in statistical mechanics. So, this is so basically this what I said is the, uh, uh, described here that if we start at one of them like this with this guy then how you go around uh, like that and come back ok we start at A then go low like that Be from here is going, going like that then you get essentially beyond a point a random coil. So, if I want to know the position of a monomer in it of, of it of a specific monomer which n contour distant apart, then all I have to do is to sum over all the vectors. So, that is shown here that I sum over all the vectors and then I then I will add this vector, this vector with this vector, with this vector, with this vector, and then if I have then I this vector. So, this if I add this vector, this vector, this vector, this vector, then I get that. So, if I want to get this distance, then I have to sum over all the vectors. That is very, very nice. These vectors are clearly random because of the tetrahedrality, because of the rotation around the bond. We call it backbone. 
and that gives rise to a wonderful thing is that the so I end to end distribution is sum over these things and uh, these are uh, projections and they can take many values. So, they are random numbers. Now, that is now we have if the, this distribution end to end distribution is a beautiful things from central Dimit theorem and polymer size distribution. So, that should be the type group the central limit theorem and polymer size distribution or polymer size distribution and central limit theorem. So, central limit theorem is something we discussed little bit before, but let me state again that if I have a n number of random number n number if, if value I have one variable x and x takes n number of distributions or I have x n number of random variables which are taking all values within a certain range and if I add them up. I sum, then if this my random variables which are uh, weakly correlated or not correlated random number, then the sum becomes a Gaussian function. This is one of the most powerful theorem in the in the in the in the in the, in the theory of probability and that is the name central limit theorem as I always tell in my class that uh, mathematicians are not given to Unlike uh, sometimes physicists, uh, like theory of everything and many other things that we do, uh, mathematicians are very conservative people. They are not used to giving very big, big names. They very rarely they say central limit theorem or fundamental, like they have a fundamental theory of algebra. And that is the most important theory of algebra, you know, that which gives you that a polynomial of degree n as will have n roots. And that that depending on the coefficients of f signs of a and b, the complex conjugates and complex roots have to be in equal number. That's the fundamental theorem, which is used everywhere. Whole complex analysis is based on that uh, fundamental theorem. Similarly, central limit theorem is a hugely important uh, in the theory of probability. It can be derived in many different ways. Uh, has been derived in many different ways, but we don't need that here. So this is what is that that if sum is a, all these numbers. Then probability of S is this thing is the Gaussian. So that may have values between plus one and minus one randomly picked up. For example, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way the way we develop a, we, we generate a Gaussian distribution in computer that we uh, call a random number. And random number between the says minus one plus one, and then um, we add them up, and it's about just about twelve. Such random numbers is enough. That means n can be twelve. Below twelve, it doesn't work that well. Sometimes we take twenty, but n equal to twelve will give you fairly good uh, Gaussian distribution. And this is something which. One should have it is uniformly distributed between plus one and minus one. Then this average goes to zero. Then you just have e to the power minus s square by two sigma square and the normalization constant in front. So now they are coming back to polymer. In the polymer, we all have this random. We are adding up. So one bond, this one, is really not that correlated with that one because it can rotate. So if I think of distance between my central and the final one, then it is adding of these projections which are fairly random. So, then my aid that my central limit theorem, I can surmise that the end to end distribution is a Gaussian and that exactly what holds down and this is one of the most uh, 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 most most is not by n can be even 12 is enough here uh, as I said in 12 is sufficient. And then we can continue a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, a as I said that it just angle cos theta i angle make with that. So, if l is the bond length l is the bond length as it is given here theta is the individual bond vectors then this theta i and cos theta i is random just between minus 1 and plus 1 as I said then r becomes. So, it becomes l square and then 
I get uh, this is double sum and one of them gives you 0 or 1 then you this this double sum become proportional to n you can do it with a random number. So, the one of them average where then the idea with respect to that and the rest one you can sum. So, uh, this should be capital N, this should be capital N, this should be capital N, this should be capital N. So, one sum is taken care to give you this random number second and that is uniform distribution second sum gives you capital N. So, R square a beautiful thing is amazing result amazing result. So, root mean square now I can say root mean square r square goes as n to the power half. This is one of the first result that that is kind of known uh, though Flory systematized it there are other people who have got this result that size of the polymer scales as n to the power. This if you think is a remarkable result because I think of is a remarkable result that root over r square which is the size is n to the power half l and remember our n it can be 1 say 100 million. So, 10 to the power 8 then r square the size become 10 to the power 4 l of l is 2 angstrom or say 5 angstrom then this 5 into 10 to the power 4 angstrom that means it is 50,000 angstrom. So, I now know the size of the polymer this is very important because that can be that can be ex, um, obtained by experiment. So, we almost doing no work because of central limit theorem almost doing no work uh, other than this little thing that we have done uh, and that is trivial. So, we get that you know if they are correlated that they are not equal, they are equal to 0 then only i equal to j survives and that is a random number that uh, you minus 1 to plus 1 that average there should be for probably a factor of half missing here you get n l square. So, we get this huge result because of the central limit theorem and uh, Prodi did not do it by central limit theorem he just took them to be, uh, a number and uh, random numbers and he used probability theory, but uh, alternative way he, he arrived at the same exactly same expression. So, we continue then what is the probability if I have n uh, a p n r is uh, I hope this is not this small mistakes are not in the book this is the book small in capital n mistakes ok uh, 4 pi 3 by 2 pi n l square 3 by 2 uh, ok. So, this is number as I said this is p n r capital R. So, this is the the full formula of the distribution n number of n to n distribution of n number of uh, for example, if I do uh, then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then this is the 10 n equal to 10 this n equal to 10 and this distance then this distance is the n to n distance this is the r. So, now this will give me if I even if I, as I told you if I have 20 then that is enough then the end to end distribution will be given by all of us have uh, done this calculation with the polymer and we have uh, found it out that this uh, this works beautifully well ok. To the extent that uh, this is a universal uh, we co consider the universal formula and the details of these bonds and the rigidity all these things are not important as per so far the form is concerned. There are certain uh, changes in this uh, rigidity and the kind of restriction on the randomness of the angles that is taken care by introducing a, a normalization a, a kind of fitting parameter here and that is 
the end of the uh, uh, end uh, distribution function is. So, now one important quantity which is the radius of gyration which is comes in the light scattering and many many theories and the radius of gyration is nothing but essentially same radius of gyration and moment of inertia that we find in, uh, in any in classical mechanics like if we have four particles then we find the radius of gyration is the uh, uh, take take it as a as a central point and then you want to find out what is the, the radius that this guy is rotating and that is mass weighted from central uh, as I was saying from central mass. So, this is the definition of the radius of gyration. So, when these things are uh, we, we face that in classical mechanics when these guys of different uh, uh, these are different mass then different mass then uh, uh, we use this as the uh, say if if mass is the same if you had then R g is thus just simply sum over R i minus R c m square. That means, now I am going to take the distance, I am going to take the distance from a central mass. So, in a polymer I can go to the uh, center of mass of a polymer sorry So, if that is such a polymer then I can go and find out a center of mass here. Then now I want to do about the center of mass what are the other guys are out just like in the classical mechanics. Then uh, that gives me from the center of mass how the size looks and then that is this quantity and one can show it is the same as this uh, into comes out because this is also a random number. These distances that I am considering are also a random number and then I again get the central limit theorem to get me this this quantity and again is a fact except factor is different I get R g is 1 over root 6 uh, R g square if I do not have that then I have R g square R g square 1 over 6 is very famous result 1 over 6 n l square. R g square 1 over 6 n l square. So, basic thing is the same as the R I mean square. So, R g square. So, R g square is same is uh, as R square with the except the numerical factor. So, the scaling remains the same. So, the size grows as root over n. 